let's go into the microscopic level now. We've seen a lot of macroscopic things, uh, temperature, we've seen what is, how we change temperatures, how we deal with phase changes. Let's actually look a little bit closer into it and see what's happening on a molecular and atomic level. So what is temperature again? Well, as we said, temperature is related to how much energy that the atoms have. More specifically, it's related to the amount of kinetic energy each atom or molecule has as it uh, moves around or vibrates. So if we have, say, a solid that has all its molecules bound in position, when an object has some temperature, something above an absolute zero, well, the molecules move around. So if we have a gas, the molecules will go around. And you can watch them as they just randomly bounce off of each other and scatter. So this blue one over here will actually move to a different position. So as they go, they just randomly move around. And that's what happens in a gas and in a liquid. In a solid, they're bound together. So instead of moving around, they still have kinetic energy. They still vibrate, but they just vibrate in place. And their bonds, bonds will stretch with them. And you can kind of think of these as little springs all attached to each other. Um, so this would be more of a crystalline solid, but it happens for any type of solid that they're bound in place. Well, there's a wonderful equation that we can get, and we're not going to do the derivation on it, but it you can get to it using momentum, and you can look up this derivation online if you're really curious. But really what it comes down to is the average kinetic energy in the system is equal to the macroscopic temperature by relating to 3 halves Kb, where Kb is a Boltzmann constant. And the Boltzmann constant has a wonderful value of 1.3. 381 times 10 to the minus 23 joules per degree Kelvin. So again, this is one of those equations that is not a delta in front of it. Anytime we have a delta, the Celsius and the Kelvin scale are going to be the same changes of temperature because they have the same increments across. This temperature does not have that temperature change, so we have to use an absolute value for this scale. This is also a way where we actually define what is zero temperature. Well, zero D temperature is defined when the kinetic energy of these molecules goes to zero. So we could take this one step further if we wanted to and figure out what is the average speed. Uh, we call it a root mean square velocity. And really all we do is just Say, what's the kinetic energy of these molecules? If each molecule has a certain amount of energy, well, 3 halves kBt, and we know that's equal to the kinetic energy, or we know that's 1 half mv squared, we just rearrange this equation. The 2's will cancel here. The mass moves to the other side, and we take a square root, so we get 3 kBt over m is equal, the square root of that is equal to the average root mean square velocity. Um, because of how, because not every molecule is exactly the same amount, this is an average, uh, there is a distribution of different speeds for this. So this uh, isn't the speed of every molecule, but this is the root mean square speed of it. So it's an average speed of the molecules. Um, it's also kind of on an interesting note, this is one of those uh, values that you can use. It's a quick and easy way to get an approximate of the speed of sound in a specific gas. So if you know the temperature of the gas, you know Kb, and you know the mass of those molecules, say we're looking at normal air, which is predominantly diatomic nitrogen, so atomic mass of 28, we can actually figure out the velocity, uh, the average velocity of those molecules which is close, it's not quite, it's a little bit less, but or this value is a little bit more than the, uh, than the speed of sound in that substance. So it's kind of a cool little um, value that you can come up with, and if you ever forget what the speed of sound is in air, if you've never learned it, 
a quick way to slightly overestimate it is to calculate the average root mean square. And really what the reason why it's an overestimate is because these molecules are not all going in a straight line in the way that the sound would be propagating. They're moving all around and colliding with each other. So again, we're just looking at the kinetic energy, the average kinetic energy of each molecule, and that's related to some temperature we associate with it. So this is how we microscopically define temperature.